Well, hello. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Claire. This is Purple Poppy. And today I'm starting work on what I'm going to call my scrappy journal. And the reason I'm calling it my scrappy journal is because I'm literally making it out of scraps that I've got around. So you remember we made these hearts? I'm going to use this as the main topper on the front. This is just a piece of coffee dyed cotton. You know how I love my coffee dyed cotton that I have stamped using Ranger ink and the stamps I have. This is an old piece of a pair of pyjamas and there's some wadding and some of my coffee dyed cotton and that is going to be my cover okay and then inside I have got packing paper that comes in boxes from places like Amazon I've got a piece of that cotton dyed uh, coffee dyed cotton because I want to do some fabric pages more packing paper this is masking paper and this is packing paper I've left the holes more fabric packing paper now this I'd already done um, and had in my stash but basically what it is let's open it up so you can see is it's a brown paper sand sandwich bag now these actually come from Tesco's here in the UK I'm sure you can get them in any supermarket in you know various sizes these particular ones are eight by five and all I did here was in the gusset I added a piece of my Sears book to join them together I put fabric over it on the outside to make it good and strong and I've just decorated up both sides so I'm putting that in there as well and then we've got more of the packing papers to go through okay so it's scrappy because all the pages are different sizes and uneven and that's what I wanted. It's really, really spongy. This screwed up packing paper with a bit of fabric in between is absolutely awesome. And then obviously the two fabric pages. So I think the first thing I want to do today is I want to get that heart onto the cover and then I want to work on one of the fabric pages. So if you are wanting to craft along with me, I am starting here. So where is my ruler? Famous last words, can't find a ruler. There we go. So the actual piece of pyjamas, but obviously you can use a shirt or any fabric for this, is 11 inches wide by seven and a quarter. Okay, the wadding, it's got cottons on it, look, it's just a leftover piece that I had, which is 10 by 6.5. You don't have to use wadding if you don't have any, you know, the idea here is not to go out spending money buying new stuff, it's using up what you've got. If you don't have wadding, then obviously it just means your cover will be a little less springy doesn't matter the whole reason that i'm doing it is a i want the spring but b i want the inside liner to cover up the stitching that i'm going to put on the outside so then the um, cotton inside is basically ten and three quarters by seven okay while i'm measuring this packaging paper although they're all slightly different because I deliberately did them rough, are very roughly 10 and a quarter ish by seven and a half. Okay? And if you want to know, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, count the bag, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15 sheets 
which means that there is obviously 60 pages. Okay, so it's going to be quite a nice little book. So I'm going to get rid of the cotton and the wadding. I'm going to put in this bit of pyjama. I'm going to fold it in half, okay, so that I know where I am. And as I always do, I'm going to use my prick stick. Now, a few people commented on previous videos asking about my glue stick. So there you go. It's prick stick. Uh, I'm sure it's available worldwide. Um, if you're going to invest in this, I find the cheapest way to buy it is to buy the 43 grams. Okay. I usually get mine either in the supermarket or eBay or somewhere like that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get this label on. So I'm going to pull it in a little bit from the edge to allow for some spine. I'm going to pull it up a little bit from the bottom and I'm going to stick in there. I'm not going to obviously go too mad with the glue, just to hold it where we want it. And I am going to stitch this. Now, today, I'm actually going to stitch this by hand. There is no reason that you can't put it on your sewing machine, but obviously you won't be able to put the... Um, See all three needles here with different coloured threads in, just to aid what's going on. Um, you won't also be able to put the heart into the sewing machine, so you need to make a decision from there. And I'm going to do very, very basic stitching because believe me, I am not a sewer. So I'm just, I've got a knot in my thread already. Just going to pull it through, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a basic running stitch. So I'm going to go in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. And the only thing I've done is I have tried to keep the stitches the same length now obviously if you want an expert to show you how to sew you're in the wrong place you need to go to somebody who's got a sewing channel i am just doing this because i want something slightly different so i'm going to go in and out and in and out and in and out pull that through that's the strings from the cotton that got caught around that now oh god it feels like a disaster doesn't it goodness me right there we go Right, put it straight and flat. Don't want any puckers in it. And then I'm gonna again repeat. So in and out and in and out and out in and out. Now obviously you could and if you were a more professional sewer probably would have done this in a matching thread so you'd have done it in a white or a cream i've actually deliberately done it in this dark thread because i wanted it almost to be a contrast Right, again, so I've pulled too hard. Let's unpucker it, put it flat, and then we're on the home straight. You see, it literally takes five minutes. It's not a long job at all. It would probably be easier if you had a shorter thread. Part of the reason 
I'm working with such a long thread is because, as you should all know by now, I am as blind as a bat without my glasses on and I've never got my glasses on. So I figured it would be easier to thread a long con before I turned the video camera on on the basis that then um, I could do multiple items and I wouldn't have to re-thread. So now to finish off I'm just going to go through the back and you're probably all sitting there saying goodness me Claire you're doing that the hard way why did you not do this that or the other and then I'm just going to do a couple of small stitches on the back and then I'm just going to take my thread one two three come through and that has created a knot for me I'll get my scissors and trim that off okay so that's that bit turn him over fold him back in half there so it's almost like a patch which goes with this lovely scruffy thing that I'm doing here okay so now I want to put my heart on so I wanted my heart to obviously not sit there because it's covering up too much of my label I wanted to almost go like that so the heart will skew with and you could see more of the label I am now wondering whether to put it more that side and then we could put some lace or something there if we want to so I'm gonna position that to where I want it I'm gonna put some glue on the back and I'm going to attach it to the fabric. No rocket science here. Those of you that have been with me for a little while know that I don't do anything uh, rocket science orientated. What I do is quite basic. It's just about sharing my ideas with you. Okay, so we've got that sort of stuck down. I say sort of because it's very bumpy on the back, which is obviously not aiding very well for a flat adhesion. I'm just going to trim that off there where that's got me knotted up. And maybe then we won't have the problems we've had just now. Okay, so this is very basically stuck. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my dark thread. to come through and stitch the heart where the joins in the string are, where the crossovers are. So can you see I've put one there and I'm deliberate, deliberately trying not to be neat and tidy here. I want it to be quite well scrappy keep using that word a little bit like sand button on really so again I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the people that have left me comments and now I'm going over to this one here. Um, we have had lots and lots of new subscribers. I'm very grateful. Glad that you're liking what I'm doing. It's great to receive your comments. And realise that although you sit here happily crafting and chatting away to yourself like some raving full because you're talking to yourself and well obviously nobody's answering it's great to know that 
at some point you get to join in and make your comments um, and I really do read your comments um, proven I think by the fact that there have been two or three of you that have said my decoupage desk makes concentrating on what I'm doing a little bit hard because of all the pattern in the background so I have introduced wallpaper um, and of course the other beauty to that is that as it gets mucky I can replace it with something else so I know this is a bit boring I do apologize just sitting there watching me sew and not even sew particularly well if we're honest but you see now I need to cut that piece of thread we've got a nice scrappy connection there and there and now I'm just going to put one down the bottom here so I'm going to go all the way down perfect and I'm going to do this bit it's obviously a little bit harder to stitch through the cardboard than it is fabric but I mean it's not majorly problematic I'm only using a standard needle and thread okay oops got caught around the bottom of the heart there we go so again <clears throat> and you see I've just sprung from point to point I'm just gonna do a little I'll do a little stitch now I seem to be there you go do a little stitch sorry I'm really concentrating aren't I <laughs> not much company today there you go we've got a nice little knot and we'll chop that off so, this is my front cover that is now ready to be sandwiched together like so. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to sew my sandwich together yet because if I do want to put something else here or here then obviously the stitches will come through to my inner cover if it's all been joined together so I'm going to set that to one side and I'm going to pull in the journal and I'm going to work on this page here so move that out the way here is my, and you can just run your fingernail down, and it does give you a pretty good crease. Now I've got to decide what I want to use. Now, this is quite a nice floral piece of fabric. Um, I am going to put a little tear line in there. And I'm going to put a tear line in there. Right, let's pull off our edges. Now this is a bit too big. So I'm going to just trim it a bit. So it will go there. And then what I want to do is I want to put this on that side of the page and I want to build up my page in exactly the same way as I would with a fabric uh, not a fabric a paper collage 
so you keep adding pieces and decorating it up now if you want to see how to do something like this in a much more professional manner <laughs> the lady I would recommend that you go along and visit to get some ideas from would be Anne, um, Anne Bowman Um, and she's basically a fabric artist um, and she's awesome and she does all sorts of things on her channel with regard to hand embroidery and she does little challenges I believe she has just started oh, I can't cut the tear this for some reason she has just started for this year um 52 tags so she's planning to do a tag a week um she did say when i watched it that it wasn't really for any particular purpose other than for the love of sewing so obviously you can pop along and have a look at her videos and see how what i'm done what i'm doing is done by a professional or you can muddle along with me okay so I'm going with that I'm now going to find some lace that I want to lay on top because this is like a fabric collage yeah I've got strings hanging from me and I think I'm going to overlap that piece there like so so I need to trim that there and again I'm gonna put a small amount of glue on this before I stitch it now I'm not gonna make you you know watch me sew because we've just established that it's not my forte but um, I'm, I will obviously stitch it all down which is part of the reason why I want to put some glue on to hold it all in place until I do I may even cheat put it on the sewing machine just because it will be very much quicker um, entirely obviously up to you and then I'm just going to run a little bit of glue up that seam and that's where I'm going to apply my fabric down at the bottom so we've got this step level that's where I'm going to apply my lace okay so we're building up this nice collage and then I've got these little wooden butterfly buttons. Now these actually came from eBay. Um, and I'm just going to put one of these on there like so. Now obviously I shouldn't really do this till I've sewn it all because otherwise that's going to make sewing a little bit difficult. But there you go and I'm going to call that one my first fabric page to go in my scrappy journal so I'm going to leave it there for today so you can see what we've done so we've done the scruffy stitching we put our heart on that we made the other day and we've put our little hand stamped cotton patch on there and we've got our first fabric page to go inside hope you've inspired you happy crafting thanks for joining me i'll see you again soon bye for now